Hello and welcome to Turn One Soul Ring. This is Turn One Soul Vlog in which I will review Commander product, talk about how the channel is doing and whatnot. Um, first, first uh, Turn One Soul Vlog, we have Commander 18. Let's go ahead and crack open Sahili here. I'm just going to kind of look through it because uh, there's going to be some cards I like, some cards I don't like. Um, I know a lot of this is probably just going to be based off of uh, Kaladesh sets, like for instance, um, not as it's significant, but uh, let's see, I saw a Kaladesh card back here. Chief of the Foundry, that's easily a card from Kaladesh, I would probably put it. I gotta give a shout out to my boy Sol Ring. Remember, you play this turn one, and then you play this, uh, is it Signet and Sol Ring? So that way, you have turn to Sahili. Echo Storm. Now I love these new Storm cards. They're command. They're essentially Commander Storm. And I, when I saw these, I loved them. I mean, they're. All, I think all of them are at Sorcery Speed, sadly. But they're so good that I think these are going to become Commander Staples. If not, com not Commander Staples, but they're going to become like um, just. I think these are going to become really good cards in the future for commander players, because especially the ones who have low-cost commanders. Treasure and Aber, uh, this card, there are not a lot of cards that I say, oh, this is going to get broken. Vintage is going to love this card. Legacy is going to love this card. Hell, I love this card, and I'm putting it in my Krenko deck because I love this card. And because he's, he stole a little soul ring. This guy might become like the little mini mascot of this channel. I'll, I'll keep him around. Uh, Unwinding Clock. This is, dear God, this card. This is a really good card. Untap all artifacts you control during each other plays on tap step. You can just be like, yeah, uh, soul ring, blah, blah, blah. If artifacts could be cast at instant speed, this would be broken. I'm just gonna say that right now. All right, so that was the Sahili deck. So looking at the other ones, let's go Eeny, Meeny, Miny, You. All right, opening up Lord Windgrace. Um, I really like Lord Windgrace as a character and I'm hoping uh, he comes back in some way. Um, either that or he brings Taser with him. Zancha Sleeper Agent. Now, Zancha uh, only got an only other card I can remember her being in was um, the Vanguard card of her, which I will put right here. Uh, she was a decent Vanguard card from what I remember. I don't remember her exact ability, but it's so nice to see her getting that new card. It's so nice to see Wingrace and Zancha both being uh, recognized kind of as those old in uh, magic lore characters. I might actually do a uh, Gathering Dust on Zancha in the future. Again, uh, Fury Storm, those new Storm cards. Really love this one. Copy target, uh, instant or sorcery spell. Oh, this one is instant at instant speed, so they're not all at sorcery speed I was wrong for. But again, I really love this, and uh, this one definitely, I think, goes really well with something like uh, Gyrus, uh, who you're going to want to cast multiple times. Uh, love this card, Crash of Rhino Beetles. Um, this is broken. It's basically a 15-15 for 5 and trample because you're going to have 10 or more lands. This is commander. You get lands out really fast regardless of what deck you're playing. But in Windgrace's deck, a 15-15 for 5 trample uh, essentially starts spelling doom for your opponents relatively quickly. Okay, this card will win you games, especially with this deck. Worm Harvest, dear god, this is... With this deck, you already have like 37 lands to work with. So if you have 17, if you have just 20 lands out, you're good for this deck. But if you have like, let's say you have all of your lands out of your deck, you have 20 on the field, 17 in your graveyard, you're making 17 one ones every turn. I don't care what kind of creatures you're running, against 17 one ones, you gotta have a lot of blockers or be running tokens yourself. I really like Worm Harvest and I hope with this deck, it just does, it, it will just do work for you. I love it for that. All right. 
uh, definitely some good cards in the um, Jun deck. Uh, I've, been, I've heard that some people have said that the Jun deck is the weakest of the three. I would disagree. In the right hands, in the right hands, and piloted well, this deck could probably be the strongest out of all of them, especially with the upgrades you can put into it, with different lands, working with different things. Uh, I definitely think it can do a lot of work, and just have you can have fun with this deck. This deck will definitely be uh, an interesting uh, experience for the other players at the table. On to the one I was most excited for, which was this Enchantments deck. This one, I have so many ideas for upgrades for. It's unbelievable. This could be, this could be a pillow fort deck. This could be a prison deck. You, there is so much you can do with this deck alone that it's just, it's going to be a lot of fun. All of these, all, all commanders are unique in their own way, but some are more unique than others. Talk about a card that can win you games. Archetype of the imagination. This card can and will outright win you games. Just because this essentially neuters the dragon deck from last year. This essentially looks at that and be like, and all of your dragons are lowly, non-flying creatures. Meanwhile, you have your 12-12 just turning sideways straight into their face. Archetype of the Imagination was a very good addition to this deck. Also, uh, two cards I did want to mention here. Uh, Myth Unbound. Your commander costs one less for cast for each time it's been cast from the command zone this game. Essentially halving the commander tax, which this card, if this card doesn't shoot up in price, I will be shocked. Also, when it's put into the command zone, basically it also helps you benefit off of field wipes, which that's even better somehow. And then Genesis Storm. Um, this is a really, really nice card, especially in this deck where you want to get enchantments out. But reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. You may put that card onto the battlefield, then put all cards. Essentially, it, help, it helps you kind of get through ma uh, pocket, uh, mana pockets or just a card where you're not getting to the cards you need. This really helps that, and I think this is really, again, the uh, Commander Storm cards I think are really, really good. Uh, Amanatu is definitely my favorite out of all four of them. This is the most unique, if I could say most unique, out of all the uh, all four of these. This she's definitely it because I have never seen an ult like this ever, and I love it. I definitely love how you know just weird um, this card is, and just in general like the strategies you could come up with uh, for her. Cloud form is interest an interesting card. I definitely like this card and it will definitely be used very well in the right deck. Okay, Magus of the Balance. I like this card purely because uh, when I played Chandelar and would use Balance, um, this this just gives me kind of that flashback to using Balance in a way as a field wipe because just if you have no creatures they have to sacrifice all of their creatures. So I, I really love this card and it just kind of gives me the, it gives me kind of a happy feeling to know that in a way, Balance got a reprint, even though it would never get a reprint. Uh, Yuriko, you have your nin uh, Ninja Commander, and this card will just be bonkers with a Ninja Tribal deck. I'm just going to say that right now. That being said, I really love Skullstorm, and I think you play this after a Field Wipe happens. Because what I would assume happens is someone plays a field wipe, then you play this, and you essentially just wreck everyone. Ultimately, do I think this is the worst commander set ever? No, no I don't. Because every commander serves a purpose in a way. For those of you who can't, you know, afford like, you know, for instance a Feldegrift or you know, an expensive commander, Ultimately, you know, you could feel, if you can't find, you know, a good cheap uh, lands commander, Lord Windgrace is your guy. If you want to play enchantments, you can play Estrid. Um, if you want to have shenanigans, you can play Amanatu. But I don't think that Commander 18 is a bad commander product, because ultimately the commanders do what their advertised is doing. Uh, Minatu cares about the top of your deck. Uh, 
Windgreeze cares about lands. Sahili cares about artifacts, and Estrid cares about enchantments. I, the problem with this commander, um, well, it's not really a problem. Every commander deck deserves to be upgraded, and I think Wizards saw that with this. They saw, okay, uh, people usually upgrade the pre-cons, this is what we're going to do. And ultimately, I don't think... And everyone was like, oh, you know, Commander sets are reprints. They're not entirely reprints. They're also giving us new cards. And with these new cards, I think we're going to get some really good stuff. Um, the new Commander Storm cards are great. We have some new really good Commanders. Uh, the Planeswalkers might not be your style. There's other Commanders in those decks that can do stuff for you. Um, financially, I again try to get these under MSRP. Either at MSRP or under, always shoot for that with any um, MTG product. Um, I was able to get all four decks for 120 bucks, um, which is about MSRP for each of them. That's just actually MSRP for each of them, sorry. So ultimately, do ultimately, I'd say buy these if you're interested. If you're a new player, buy these because these will help you, you know, enter the format. Buy these if you're interested or if you're new because this helps you get into the format or, you know, this might give you a new commander project to work on. So, I'm going to say, I say, I will say Commander 18 is not the worst commander product out there. Um, it may feel like that to a lot of people, but ultimately everything in Magic serves a purpose and... Um, this serves the purpose of helping the players with who want to enter Commander and who want to uh, try something new. That's how I feel about this. It's not the worst thing ever. That's, that was called Masters 25. That was the worst thing ever. But, but I... I'm not going to go out and say, oh, this is the worst commander ever. I feel like that is being very pessimistic and being just... And I, I don't think that really kind of shows the true nature of the set. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, comment down below. Tell me what you thought of Commander 18. And if you want to support the channel, Please subscribe and make sure to hit that bell so you know when the next Turn 1 Soul Ring video is uploaded. Have a good one, guys. I was rambling for that last.